Hi guys, welcome to Life and Alt's Beauty. Today I will be showing you how I make a scarf using the Centro 40 pin. It's a smaller size scarf. Um, I'd say it's probably better for a child. However, it's up to you if you'd like a thinner scarf, by all means. Um, otherwise, I recommend using a bigger Centro machine like the 48 pin or the Addy King, I think. Um, just one that has has more pins. What I'll be using today is the Centro 40 pin machine, obviously. I've also got uh, the, rem the remainder of a ball of the jo Joanne's brand Big Twist. I don't remember. I think it's like rainbow, um, like the, the value rainbow. It's labeled as a five weight yarn, but I've always found it to be on the lighter side of a four weight yarn. So test it in your machine obviously. If it works, excellent. It should work. It's, like I said, a fairly thin yarn. And then also what you will need is some waist yarn and a crochet hook. Now the Centro does come with a crochet hook. I've just found that I prefer using this one better. It's a size C or two and a half millimeter hook. For the waist yarn, you can use any kind of yarn that works in your machine. Um, I have these pre-cut because I've used them before in the Central 40 pin and I just like reusing the yarn instead of having to recut it every time. I tie them differently. This one is for the beginning of the work and this one is for the end of the work. For this particular pattern, it's very customizable and I will just be using up the rest of this ball. It's an old ball that I have and I don't have any other plans for it. I just want to use it up and I think this will be an excellent project for that. So let's get into it. To cast on, you're going to thread the yarn around the first hook. In this case, mine is black. You are then going to weave the yarn in front of and behind each of the hooks as you can see me doing here. A good way to make sure that you've done it correctly is to make sure that when you finish, you end up going in front of that beginning hook. Again, my black hook. Once you've got that finished, you can then put your yarn into the tension holder and begin cranking. Once you've gotten to the end of the yarn, in this case the waist yarn, then you're going to just throw that into the middle, wrap it around the last peg and throw that yarn into the middle. Then you'll take your new yarn and lay it right alongside and then feed that through the tension holder and continue on as normal. Once you've cranked a little ways, then you can tie a knot and then in this case, because it's waist yarn, I'm just doing a single loose knot. But if you're going to be doing a permanent color change, then you'll make sure it's a good tight knot. Once you've started with your main color, you're going to crank until you've reached the desired length of your scarf. If you'd like to change colors midway through to make a striped scarf or other designs, Feel free to do that using the same method that I show to change the waist yarn to the main yarn. But like I said, make sure you have a good tight knot that's not going to fall out. Alrighty, I've been cranking for a little while and I wanted to take a break to show you guys what to do when your piece reaches the bottom of the table or the surface that you're working on. 
in this stage, you need to roll it up because otherwise it'll start dragging and it'll start pulling on your work and giving you tucked and dropped stitches. So we need to roll it up. And then as you continue on, you'll just continue to roll it further and further until you get to the end of your piece. All right, I'm getting to the end of my piece here, so I figured I'd pick it up again. Uh, I'm just going to use up the rest of this yarn, bring it right to the end so I can use up as much as possible. And then I'll be able to cast off. And I'm going to use the waste yarn cast off method where just like at the beginning, I use waste yarn. So I'll change the color to the waste yarn. And then I will wrap that, make a few different rows. Um, I think I did about six or seven. And then I can just continue to crank until my piece falls off once I'm done using the waste yarn. Again, once you've cranked a little bit, then you can go through and tie off that end so that it doesn't fall apart there. Once you've finished your waste yarn row, you can flip your end into the center of your piece and crank two more rows. And this will make your piece just fall right off. Sometimes you'll have a stitch that gets caught on the hook like I did here and I cranked a little bit too far which started pulling out that top row but that's okay. I just undid that row and uh, or you, you can just undo that row and it won't bother you or you can just leave it which is what I ended up doing. And again it won't really make that big of a difference because this is for the waste yarn and it will be removed at the end anyway. Once you've got your piece completed, then we're gonna go ahead and stretch it out really well, both lengthwise and widthwise. This will help the stitches kind of settle in and take shape how they're supposed to, as opposed to having, you know, uneven tension where the yarn was a little bit tighter or looser. Just make sure everything's a little bit more even and looks like it will when your piece is finished fully. The next step is to close up our ends to sew it together to create a cohesive scarf. What I'm gonna do is a pretty cool closure method that you can use for scarves, headbands, etc. Um, whatever has a straight sewn up end. What you're gonna do is you're going to find where your half is and you're going to stick your crochet hook through one of the stitches. You wanna make sure that you're using the final stitch and you can see this in the with the waist yarn, which is why you definitely want to make sure you have a different color yarn. And then you're going to pull it through and you're going to alternate each side that you pull through. So you can see left side, then the right side and then the left side. And this will create a really solid closure that won't come apart. Um, you're not going to be dropping stitches. The only thing you really need to make sure with this method is that your final stitch is very well secured because if that falls apart, then everything else is gonna fall apart. So I found to ha that I have really good success with this method. It's very neat, it stays very well, but again, you do need to make sure that the end is very well closed off.
we're getting to the end, it gets a little bit tricky here. You want to make sure that you're catching every single stitch because if you miss one, then you will drop stitches. Um, I, in this project, I did miss a stitch and I can show you how I fixed it. Fortunately, it was a final stitch and it was a super easy fix. Um, but if you miss one in the middle of it, it's going to be a lot more difficult to fix. And in that case, I recommend just taking a sewing needle and sewing it as opposed to trying to completely undo your seam and redo it because then you risk the, run the risk of dropping more stitches. So you can see here that uh, when I finished up, I pulled the last, um, my tail from my scarf through that last stitch and pulled it tight. From here, you can create a tighter knot. I didn't do that here. Um, I did this off camera. However, you want to make, like I said, you want to make sure it's really nice and tight. Um, and then you can pull out all of this waste yarn here. All right, here it is looking all nice and finished. As you can see, this is a really neat seam and it looks very nice. Now the last step that I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it through. So I'm going to give it one last final knot. I get a little bit paranoid about these things sometimes. So I'm going to give it one last final knot and then I'm going to pull it into my work and that's how I will be finishing up this scarf. Once you're done with that, then you're going to try to follow your seam down, trying to keep the scarf more or less straight and even down to the other side, and we're going to repeat the same thing. At this point, if you feel confident with doing that seam, you can go ahead and skip to 17 minutes and 25 seconds or around there, and we'll be able to pick up again.
again, as I'm getting close to the end, it got a little bit difficult for me, so I pulled it off camera so that I could wrestle with it a little more effectively, since having it held underneath the camera was just a little bit awkward. And we're back. Um, so at this point, I kind of got it figured out a little bit better loosened so that I can more effectively show you. And again, we're getting close to the end. We're making sure everything's nice and picked up and tight. And off camera I go again. <laughs> um, but again, you're going to make sure that you pull through the tail through that last stitch. And at the time, I didn't realize this. However, I did miss a stitch here. And I found this out once I pulled out my waist yarn. Fortunately, it was at the end of the work, so it was an easy fix, like I said earlier. And there it is, the little stitch that I forgot to pick up. As you can see, it's right at the end of my work. So all I did was I took out the little knot that I had made, and again, this is why you got to make sure you have a really good knot, because you can see how easily I took that out. So all I did was I pulled it out, and then I got my crochet hook, stuck it through what I thought was my last stitch, put it through the one that I missed, and pulled that right on through. And then I finished off my scarf with another knot, and again, the tighter knot, and then I pulled my yarn inside my scarf. All right, so the scarf is done. Uh, as you could tell, it's not the biggest scarf. I didn't keep track of the rows, like I mentioned earlier, but you make it basically as long as you want or as long as the yarn that you have. Um, I would say this is probably about 400 rows. Um, I didn't see the need to keep track, but this is what it turned out to be. I prefer to have my scarves just plain ended. I don't tend to like the look of tassels. They tend to get messy for me. So that's why I choose to keep them plain, but you can for sure add tassels. You can make it however you want. You can add stripes to this. You can use a multicolored yarn. That way you don't have to change your yarn colors while you're making it. So good luck with your projects and I hope to see what you make. Have a good night. Bye.